Our scripture reading for today, as we finish the sermon series in the book of Matthew, is from Matthew chapter 16. So listen for the word of the Lord. Now when Jesus came to the area of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the human one is? And they replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said, And what about you? Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Then Jesus replied, Happy are you, Simon, son of Jonah, because no human has shown this to you. Rather, my Father who is in heaven has shown you. I tell you that you are Peter, and I'll build my church on this rock. The gates of the underworld won't be able to stand against it. I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Anything you fasten on earth will be fastened in heaven. Anything you loose on earth will be loosened in heaven. Then he ordered the disciples not to tell anybody that he was the Christ. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I want you to think about a beautiful day. You're either driving or riding in the car, depending on which you prefer. And the windows are down and you are cruising. You reach over, turn the radio on, and your favorite kind of music comes on. Now take a second and think about what song or type of music that might be. So there have been really interesting studies done that look at trends in the types of music we prefer, when our music tastes stopped developing, and how much we actually listen to music as we get older. And these studies included preteens, teenagers, and adults. So these studies find, not surprisingly, that we listen to music less as we get into our adult years with increased responsibilities like higher education, raising children, caring for aging parents. There's just not that level of free time in our 30s as when we were preteens and teenagers. Imagine that, right? Now, I thought this was really interesting. Our musical tastes stopped developing around age 14 for boys and 13 for girls. That means we stop listening to new music and stick with the same genre for the rest of our lives. So if you thought about a song or type of music in that fictional car ride, does that match up to what you were listening to when you were roughly 13, 14? So in looking at this, I decided I conducted a little experiment of my own. And I looked at the top 100 hits when I was 25 versus when I was 13. I knew very few of the hits from when I was 25, but I could sing almost every one, at least a little bit of the song, from the year I was 13. So if you want to spend a fun hour or so with Google and you want to do a little bit of math to figure out what year you were what age, you can spend some time and try that. But even if our musical tastes don't evolve beyond our teens, we are constantly changing throughout our lives. Maybe you find a new movie to be really good or there are foods you eat now that you didn't eat 10 years ago. Life is fluid and we are always ever changing. So today we finish our sermon series on the book of Matthew. And in the four chapters or so that we've covered, we've seen Jesus traveling around with his disciples, preaching, teaching, healing. 
And some of that has included parables and miracles, instructions for both God's kingdom in heaven as well as God's kingdom on earth. All the while, Jesus has been followed, confronted and accused even by the Sadducees and the Pharisees. John the Baptist, a disciple of Jesus, has met his demise, and Jesus has had little time to grieve his friend. So you can see how things are building toward Jerusalem, where Jesus will meet the events of the last week of his life. But Jesus knew there were things he needed to do before Jerusalem could happen. He needed to call his disciples, he needed to teach them, and he needed to give them a mission. And here he creates the church, a house of worship similar to the synagogue that they already knew, but different. So Jesus starts by asking his disciples who the people say the human one, other translations of the Bible say son of man, who the human one is. And they respond, John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah. The, the people didn't get it yet. It was easier for them to conceive that deceased John and long deceased Elijah or Jeremiah had been resurrected than it was to think of Jesus as the Christ. So Jesus turned that same question on his disciples. Peter, or Simon Peter, Peter, still at this point, tended to be the spokesperson for the disciples. So when Jesus asked, Who do you, plural, say that I am? Peter responded, The Christ, the Son of the living God. Ha ha, finally someone got it. The disciples were catching on, and it was not because Jesus performed miracles, and healed the sick. They didn't need evidence. They recognized Jesus as the Christ because God had revealed this to Peter. And on Peter, Jesus decides to build the church. Now, here's where interpretations diverge. So if you're reading a Catholic commentary on this passage, the church, capital C, is literally built on Peter the person, which makes Peter the very first pope and creates the papacy. If you're reading a Protestant commentary, the church is founded not on Peter the person, but on Peter's confession of who Jesus actually is. There's also a little bit of Greek wordplay here that's, that's worth mentioning. Peter in Greek is Petros. Rock in Greek, which is the thing upon which Jesus is building the church, Petra. So Petros and Petra. So here's why I think all of this is important. The church universal is ever-changing. So, okay, maybe our musical tastes freeze in the first two decades of life, but the church is just the opposite. Sure, okay, yeah, there are times we feel stuck or when we feel we've stagnated, but the church is intended to be this living, growing, evolving thing. And that means two things. First, We've got to confess that God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, is the creator, redeemer, sustainer of everything that's ever been. We've got to rejoice in the God we worship and praise the love and mercy that God freely gives to us. Second thing we need to do is make sure we've got ears to hear. God will communicate with us the direction of the church. And we need to make sure that we've got our hearts and minds open for that discernment. 
And in the meantime, we're going to try some new things. If you've ever attended a worship service in person, you've probably heard me say that at some point over the last nine years. Now, not all of the things we are going to try are going to be a success, but we can learn just as much from an attempt at something as we can from an event that's wildly successful. Let me give you an example of that. Last year, we sent out a congregational survey and we held these planning meetings. And during the course of all of that, the congregation said they were not particularly interested in having more Bible studies. And then we started a new Bible study and 18 people came out for it. Success! Now, from that, we learned that the particular Bible study we chose was too intensive for the group with too much weekly reading. So it wasn't a complete success, but we rejoiced over the attendance and learned from the struggle. So if we're not called to stagnate, we've got to try new things and learn from them. And as we finish this series on Matthew, let me issue you a challenge. I want you, in the week ahead of whenever you're watching this, the week ahead, I want you to listen to some good music. Choose your favorite song or your favorite type of music. And when you're done, give thanks to God for the talent of the musicians and the singers and for the decades over which you've listened to that music. Then, I want you to listen to some music you've never listened to before. And when you're done, I want you to give the same thanks to God for the talent of the musicians and singers. Okay, so maybe your tastes will continue to evolve and you'll discover new music that you kind of like or maybe you'll be glad to turn it off. Either way, when you're done, ask God to keep your ears open for how the church is growing, evolving, changing. So let's close in prayer. God of all creation, we thank you for the earthly ministry of Jesus, for the disciples, and for how they learned to listen and follow. We thank you for music and the way it speaks to us. Be with the congregation of Valley United as we try new things, build new relationships, and seek to follow your plan for us. Teach us, guide us, show us who you're calling our church to be in and for our community. In Jesus, who is the Christ, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.